So good morning, and everyone made it in, <laughs> which was a bit of a worry on my part for a little bit. I'm thinking I'm not going to make it, and everyone's just going to have to tweet about it later. So, <laughs> so welcome to Twit Link Facegram, which is a title that I came up on a whim, and now I'm stuck with it. So hopefully everyone enjoys. So basically, is everyone here? I kind of work from the knowledge that you have a working knowledge base of. Uh, any social media, so Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and but at the same time, we're such a small group right now that if you have any questions or about each one, don't hesitate to ask any questions. So, just a quick survey. So, who's on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram, Reddit, Google, Blogger, Tumblr? There's a lot here. So it's one of those things where everyone always goes, well, I should be on social media, and it's very hard to decide which one you should be on. And the thing about social media is that not everything's a great fit for you, and not everything's a great fit for your company. But at the same time, there is something there that will feel right to you, and you get on, and you understand. And it's a matter of playing with it. To be honest, a lot of these, I go on, and you know, Pinterest didn't really fit for me, but I love Twitter. LinkedIn, I understand its value, but Facebook is where I really get the most out of. So it's really what feels right, what you like, and the good ones. So, so this, I found this quote, and I thought, well, this fits perfectly. Quit counting fans, followers, and blog subscribers like bottle caps. Think instead about what you're going to achieve with and through the com community that actually cares about what you're doing. And that's the thing. There is a very large community out there that wants to listen to you or even just doesn't want to listen to you, that just wants to be like, follow me, follow back, or one of those things, or just add you on LinkedIn just because you say, I'm connected to X amount of people. But how many of those connections are real? I get so, a question. My, yeah. My whole, I wouldn't social media because I, I worry about the time it would take for me to get and you know what, that's the thing is like a lot of it, I kind of look at social media is what value am I getting from it and how much time do I have to put into it. And I was at one conference once and they said, you know, you could put all this time in, but you can think of it as how much time did you spend going out to sales contacts? That's, you know, I'm going to put that for one client, driving there, doing presentation, coming back into 20 minutes a day on one of these. And that's the thing. It's like you don't see the immediate results, which is very hard to justify that time. But at the same time, it's once you go into it, you get a feel for it, whether or not it fits. And, and is there a demographic yeah. of age? Is there a demographic that's following that? It kind of varies from each one, to be honest. And so I'm going to go through each one and sort of talk about the benefits. Don't worry. Yeah. So I always think that the benefit in social media is the conversations you have. It's about engagement. It's not just about, look at my stuff, look at my stuff, this is what I do. It's about, look at my stuff, what do you think of my stuff? Tell me where, how you've used my stuff before. You want to talk to people. So I'm going to start with Facebook. Facebook is the most popular one. Everyone's got Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> There are 1.1 billion active users worldwide. Facebook accounts for three of every four minutes spent on social networking sites. And I heard that and I was like, yeah, yeah, that feels right. <laughs> but at the same time, it's amazing. The numbers that I found on this is 46% of consumers expect customer service and from, their, from brands' Facebook walls, but only 23% actually provide it. So, and 50% of U.S. consumers who've liked a brand on Facebook say the brand's social place is more useful than the website. And the reasoning behind this, I believe, is that it's updated. There's more conversation going on. There's more, this is what's happening now, whereas anyone who's created or maintained a website, you know that making small changes are not small tasks. So, whereas going onto Facebook, popping a photo on, being like, this is what we just did, that's an easy sort of, that's a manageable day-to-day -day approach to your business. And so I like Facebook. So I'll give you a little bit of background on this. I don't use Facebook very well for my company, but what I use it very well for is promoting myself. I look at it as these are my friends, these are the people who are supporting me, these are who are interested in what I'm doing. 
I'm going to brag about myself because everyone's got their kids up there, and I don't have kids. But you know what I do? I design awards. I do programs. I do cool designs. So I'm going to brag about that. <laughs> and so I kind of look at it as these are the people that can be your buyers. But if not, they're people that when someone brings up what they're looking for, they can say, "My friend can do this." So why don't you use it as a platform to support yourself and be like, "I did something cool. Don't you think it's cool?" Very simple. The other great thing about Facebook is that it's a strong mix of visual and text. So Twitter, you're kind of limited to about 140 characters. You can put a picture up, but on Facebook, you can put articles, you can put your opinions on articles, you can really tie together a personality of what you're doing. So that's great. So what? Anyone here know Redwood Classics? Yep. So they're a clothing apparel company based in Toronto, and everything is made in Canada. And I love their Facebook wall, mostly because they co they cover everything. Basically, what I'm telling you to do, they already do. So what's great is here's an example of a shot of their wall. So it goes from a picture of a piece that they did, so made in Canada. A pin, so a connection to their other social networks. So again, if maybe Facebook isn't the strongest one for you, you might be a better person on Pinterest. So there's another way to connect to them that way. And they also bring in an article that they found interesting. So why is Facebook blue? The science behind colors and marketing. And then they tie it in and say, "Isn't this interesting? We can we can PMS color match." So at that that way, they're like, "This is something cool, but it's also something cool that we can do that way." Again, it's not blatant, look at me, look at me promotion, but at the same time, it's giving you a bit of information. And what's great about that is like, you want to you wanna show what you can do. You want to show the thought processes behind what you can do. And Facebook is a great platform for that because it gives you a little more time to explain what you're doing, while at the same time including visuals, articles, et cetera, et cetera. This is not an industry one, but Playforge is a game manufacturer, so they're a game designer. And they put this up on their Facebook wall, and this is the rejected designs. So this is the thought process behind a game that they just launched. This is one of the characters, and this is how they showed you. The, these are our processes. It's not a matter of slapping up art and being done with it. They put the thought and creativity. And if you think of all your promotions, you have a lot of rejected designs and a lot of rejected ideas about what it goes through. So why not share how you got to the end line, like the end product, share why you thought it was interesting. And start talking. <laughs> Conversations will drive up interaction by 10 to 20 percent. You got to promote yourself and that's the way that people can sort of see your personality emerge from it. It's got to be something really strong for you. So you're all interesting people. You all do an interesting job. Most of the people I tell what I do, they're like, no way, that's awesome. The same with what you do. Share what you're doing. And, be, and so one of those things is, I always say, think about what you like about a brand's page and duplicate it. That's why you're following them. So why can't you sort of do the same of what you're doing? And so Facebook, what Facebook can do for you. Again, it allows a connection. It allows you to promote yourself, to share what you're doing. At the same time, there, it's a very casual environment. I mean, what you might say in a Facebook page or in a Facebook group, because Facebook does have those groups, might be a little more informal than what you might say on a LinkedIn, which is a far more public forum. Facebook also allows a lot more of a personal setting so you can be a little more open and at the same time your personality bleeds through. And that's what social media is about. It's why you connect with people and it's why you want to do what you're doing. So any questions? Okay, next one. <laughs> I like to say that Twitter is like a bar, Facebook is your living room, and LinkedIn is the local chamber of commerce. So again, not everyone suits Facebook. Some people suit LinkedIn. I'll be honest, in our office, David, so there's Roz, David, and I. Roz is all over Facebook. I love Twitter. And David is a LinkedIn champion. He is, I was like, oh, he doesn't really do social media. And then I started looking through this and I was like, he's chatting everywhere. But at the same time, he doesn't see himself as a social media person. But he does like this because it allows him to talk to people, to gauge what's going on, and to promote himself at the same way. 
So, this is what I like about LinkedIn too, is that 49% of users use word of mouth brand recommendations. And anyone who's on, everyone's on LinkedIn I assume? How many people spend time on LinkedIn? No? <laughs> yeah, that David does. <laughs> Uh, but the great thing about LinkedIn is it does connect you, you can create a brand page for your company. And that way people can, again, like it, and people might be more inclined to like your brand page over, you know, I liked it, and all my pictures of grandkids and kids and weddings and et cetera, et cetera, over Facebook. And what's great about them is 37.2% of users increase their branding and market presence through, through LinkedIn, which means not just going out, connect, connect, connect. It's going out, connecting, recommending people, putting in your opinion on groups, that sort of platform. And then this fun fact, the top CEO name for men is Pete, while women it's Deborah. LinkedIn had all these facts, and I was like, oh, I like that one. That's really strange. <laughs> I was, so LinkedIn, again, it's far more professional. People are a lot more inclined to be formal on it while at the same time they don't put as much out there. So when you do it, put your best foot forward. Be the person who contributes, who adds people. Make sure it's a personal connection again. That's what, it's a social networking, not a add me, add me, add me networking. It's saying, we met here. I think I'd like to stay up to date about what you're interested in. Here's what I do. Really simple. That's what they always say about networking is don't just hand them your card tell them why they should deal with you. And groups. I love LinkedIn groups. I think they're really interesting. They're better when people are contributing to them. So my main point always on the internet is never be negative, always be positive. Because it, again, creates a better platform for yourself. If you're someone who is interesting and engaged and engaging, people are going to respond to you a lot better and then you can then use that platform to promote what you do without seeing someone who complains a lot or is not engaged or is not really interesting is just using this as a place to bitch about. So just a quick example of LinkedIn and also if you're looking for a job. I know some of you own your own businesses here so that's maybe not your incentive but at the same time check to see who's hiring check to see who's in, who's looking to build their companies it may be something as small as staples but what about one of your clients is growing talk to them about that say what is your incentive here are you looking to engage like are you looking to build your sales force let's talk about promotions and employee recognition to keep the sales force that you come in just on the distributor side that works on a supplier side, they have a new hire. Go and say, love to work with you. Let me know. Let me tell you what we do. It's, again, it's a point of engagement for everyone. So, again, what do you share? I always say, what, what do you do that's interesting? What do you want to share? What do you want people to know about your company? I say that's the most important thing about what it is. So again, talk about each project that you do. When I was going through, I was going through the other night and sort of updating myself on what my friends and contacts are doing and a lot of what people were doing was they were getting recommendations for projects that they worked on. So one friend is an event planner and a lot of what people were saying is she was organized, she kept the tone, like the event couldn't have gone off without her. Ask for those recommendations from your clients and that way if someone looks you up because in this age of Googling, people will look you up. Let them know, this is what I do, this is how, what people have thought of what I do. I think it's interesting. And suppliers, talk about projects that you've done. I mean, I have a lot out there, a lot of televised awards, a lot of just really cool designs, or a lot of just test awards that I've done or test projects that I've done that I just think are neat. So I'm gonna put them up there, I'm gonna share them. Again, I put them on my network so that people can see what I can do and it's it's good that way because most people don't know what you do or when you say I'm a promotional products distributor I'm built or I make award or I sell water bottles what does that mean I sell marketing plans and this is what I did for one client so this is uh, this is Warby Parker and what they are is they make sunglasses and so this is from a brand launch of them. 
Again, it's just showing really simple, post it on Instagram, here's one of our clients, add a brand launch, doesn't it look cool? That way, you've engaged clients, you've shown them what you can do, something neat. Again, so the other thing is to focus on is emotional connections to brands and products are higher when people know about the staff who developed it, when you can put a face behind it. You think of the different clients that you've engaged in, does it look, what do you think of when you think of them? Do you think of the people or do you think of the product? Anyone think of any examples or? So one company, so Faro, a lot of what they do on their Facebook is that every time it's, a, it's one of their staff's birthday or an anniversary, they'll put it up and be like, she's been with us for 20 years, or this is her first year, it's her birthday, celebrate it. When you're looking at that, you're a little more engaged with the company that's buying from you. So promote, again, it's a promotion of yourself, it's a promotion of the people. So it's, I don't know, is anyone a supplier here or everyone's a distributor or all, dis all distributors? Again, show who works for your company. Show the face behind it. And at the same time, show what you do. So, any questions so far? Or? Okay, Instagram. Anyone know what Instagram is? Or <laughs> just one more. <laughs> Instagram has 100 million monthly users and 8,500 likes per second on Instagram. It is a younger platform. I hardly agree with this. It is a heavily visual platform. And of the brands that use Instagram, 41 now post at least one photo a week, which is a lot. And again, it's a very visual one. It can also be connected to your Facebook and Twitter. Very good that way. But the other thing about Instagram is it's very, very visual. So you can put up what you do, at the same time get a lot of engagement. Again, it may not be the right fit for your company, but it's worth checking out and taking a look and playing with it a bit. At the same time, you may just want to play with it because there's really nice filters when you put photos up. <laughs> so this is an example of, uh, this is Loco Shop. And so what they are is they are a skateboard manufacturer. And they posted a, one of their clients or one of their buyers, so a consumer, and this is a family friend that did this. So he had his board and it broke. He just did a trick and it broke in half. And so he was like, I'm really sad, my board broke. Instead, what Loco did was they saw it, they saw that people were engaging with him, so they went and talked to him. And they're like, our boards aren't supposed to do that, send me your address, and they sent him all of this. Of, you know, and that, you know what, at that point, he and his friends will buy Logo Shop for the entire of their life. It's very simple. At the same time, what did it cost them to send out anything? So you have a client who's engaging with something, what you do, you post up a photo, this is a cool project, that looks amazing. Fabulous, let me send you a sample. Let me show you what we can do. It's very small on your part. What does it cost for a long-term engagement in that manner? So strength in visuals. Another strength in visual is Pinterest. Pinterest, the average visit is one hour and 17 minutes. <laughs> you look very, that's not, <laughs> a lot of people do. And the thing about Pinterest is their brand engagement is huge. People are more likely to buy off Pinterest than any other social media out there. Yeah, and I'm telling you, my friend planned her entire wedding off Pinterest, and she just connected to everyone who was doing it, and it's very simple of, she went to Toronto Cupcakes, found it, Toronto Bridal Flowers, found it, they just, she just found it through tag words. And I, like, I am not on Pinterest, I don't get it, <laughs> I also probably shouldn't with the amount of time I spend on everything else, but they are, they have such a strong connection with people. Like an hour and 17 minutes is a long time to spend on just one thing. But the other thing about Pinterest, which is also good for our industry, seeing as we're largely a women-based industry, is that 80% of them are women, which means the engagement rate is a little bit higher here. And again, there's not a lot you have to do to put something on Pinterest. And it's like if anyone familiar with it or not familiar with Pinterest, 
it's basically a board where you can put up things you like and you pin it, which is sort of like a like. Or at the same time, you can have boards where food or photography or quotes or cool projects. So you have one for your brand. Again, this is another place where you can start sort of building the personality of your brand. Can't say that I've done it just because, again, one more thing. But, you know, a lot of people, if you have an intern or you have a new employee, just say, put things up there that you like and that connect with us. At the same time, this is what Logotext did with one of their pictures. So Devco, they have those bags with the little cherry on top and they look like cupcakes. Everyone knows those? One of their events, they got a picture from their client, cupcakes on a cupcake tower as a giveaway at the end of the night. Really simple, small one, but again, it shows presentation behind the idea. It shows the creative side of each one. And that's what you can use Pinterest to do, is that maybe you could just, if you look at the sidebar up here, a lot of it is the pens we do, tumblers, et cetera, et cetera. But right here, that's something cool. Like, how likely are you to take that image and put it onto something else? To pin, share, tell your client, look what someone else did with this product. I think we could do a really similar theme. A little something creative. But again, it is another site. And that's where you have to sort of look at what you're doing. And is this what I think is valuable? Is this, even just as a design resource, I have to say, I pop on there once in a while if I'm, I needed a job where they needed fern artwork. They just wanted to put ferns, and I was like, I don't know where to do. Went onto Pinterest, found ferns, and then just took that and like traced it. Really simple. It was sort of a manipulating of art that was out there. They just wanted it put on something. But that's a design resource right there where I could tell them, I could send the client one of three different photos, and I was like, which one do you think works best for you? Use it that way, it's fabulous. And Twitter. So I'm if I'm moving I think I'm moving too fast here. So if everyone's good, everyone's kept up. So Twitter. Uh, when I first did this presentation, my mom was in the room, and this is strictly for her, but just in case any of you need it as well, it's it's tweets, not twits. <laughs> so I get a lot of a, go twit this. I was like, no, no, that's not what this is. <laughs> So I will be honest with you, I love Twitter. I think it's fascinating. I have a personal account and I have the work account. And to be honest, I've gotten jobs off Twitter. I've, which most people, like I, I got my first one I went and I was like, I got it, I got a job. Now I can justify all the time I've spent on it. Which is not what my boss wanted to hear, but <laughs> he was like, no, no, this doesn't work. I'm like, but look it, it paid for itself. <laughs> And, but I think what's fabulous about Twitter is it's a conversation. It's a never-ending feed of what's going on out there. But at the same time, Twitter might not be for you. And I always say this, like, don't, if you're afraid of it, play with it a bit. There's no, like, I, when I first went on Twitter, I, I lurked for about six months before I actually tweeted something or started engaging. And, and to be honest, from this point, I've, gotten jobs off it, I've made connections from it, and I've met the most amazing group of people that in any other way I would not have run into. Which is, again, me justifying my time on there, but kind of neat. Let's see, yeah. um, like, if somebody sends you a tweet, mm -hmm. that's a response kind of spectrum. Um, it kind of varies. Like, some people are very active on it. I. I look at it as a conversation. So when you're texting someone, you have that sort of window of a lull of what you can sort of be like, I'm not, I'm busy, I'm actually doing things. But at the same time, you can be responding right away. So, and at the same time, you may not get conversation on it. That's where you have to go out and engage with it. A lot of people are active on it. I know some people that are far too active on it. And then some people who, once a day, they'll go on and you can just see them like, for an hour, they're responding to everyone. And, and that's really, it goes back to how much time do you want to spend on this? How much time do you want to invest in what you're doing? And so the same, same thing. And these questions can apply for everything. All the social media aspects that I've talked about so far is like, why are you on Twitter? 
Like, are you going on because you're just going to post what you do and hope that someone goes, oh, that's neat, that's something cool, or finds you via a hashtag or do something? Or are you on Facebook? Like, why are you on Facebook? Like, what is, what is it you're hoping to get out of your time here? Or are you worth following? Same with LinkedIn. Are you worth connecting with? Are you worth the time that it takes to read what you put out there? And are you asking the right questions out there? Like, are you engaging in the right people? And to be honest, I engage in a whole spectrum. If they make me laugh, I'll follow them. If I think they're interesting, if they're a brand I like, even if it's something, the way I found the job on Twitter was, I, someone, like it was a music site, and they always post really good videos. They always tell you about good concerts in Toronto. And then they said, latest company is doing, like they're launching, an awards program, and it was like the first of this small, small music award, very small. But I went to a distributor, a friend of mine, and I was like, I think this is a good opportunity. I think you should go to them. They're launching a new award. Went to them, perfect. He got in on that, just saying, I saw your post on Twitter. Let's do business. Let me see how I can help you. And that was the thing. It was just sort of knowing what's going on out there. I always took it as... Like, are you following the right people? Like, are, I'm, am I looking at what someone is doing and am I engaged in it? Or even, are you following your clients and they're putting up a lot of things? Or they're engaging. You know, we're about to celebrate our 50th anniversary. There's your chance to go to them and say, 50 years, that's a big year. Do you want to do anything to celebrate? Very simple, very small. But again, it shows your engagement with what you're doing. So quick facts about Twitter. Four million tweets per day which is a lot, and it can really seem like that. That's the thing is like, what time do I spend on this? Same thing, what time do I spend on LinkedIn? It's what you want to do. If you think you have 20 minutes per day to put into social media, that's all you need to do. But at the same time, I think when you start something, invest in it a little bit. Same thing when you do anything else. Put your time and energy into it to see whether or not it's going to pay off. And then, fun fact, best time to tw post for retweets is 5 p.m. That's usually while everyone's on the train and going, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and the best time to post for click-throughs is 1 to 3 p.m. Everyone knows that's break time when your brain needs a little bit of a mental break. And at the same time, it's kind of the engagement time. And there's a lot of, a lot of sites out there where you can actually see what your followers and the people you're following when they're most active on there. So, business tweets. <laughs> I honestly think, again, the strength in Twitter is the conversation aspect of it, is when you go and you talk on it. So, the best way is go out, has someone posted something you like? What, how did you do this? What's your history behind it? Ask questions, because at the same time, I always look at Twitter as this hive mind of information. This is where you're going to get how, how people did things, why people are interested in this, are they looking for jobs, or is there a way can we connect off Twitter? And I've done that with people. I've reached out and I was like, I'm really interested in what you do. Do you have an email I can send? Can I ask you a question? Perfect. Done. And it was like it was a small networking thing and they are like, you got to come to this networking event. I think you'd get a lot out of it. Perfect. Really simple, but really cool. But again, it might not be right for you. And to be honest, David in the office is just like, I don't get Twitter. I get that you get it. I'm surprised at all the things that happen to you from it, but it's not me. But at the same time, he's LinkedIn. But it, so if you're on there, don't be afraid to lurk a little bit, like sort of play around and see what's interesting. It's the same thing with all the other me social media things. It's like, will this work for me? Is this a nice fit for what I can do? Can I spend 20 minutes a day on it? Also, another thing you can do for Twitter and also Facebook is there's a lot of, again, Hootsuite is one for, tw uh, for Twitter where you can put up what you're doing and you can plan your tweets ahead of time and then just pop in every once in a while. So you can, I have one friend who does the social media for a nail salon. She's like, I'm going on vacation and then set up a whole week's worth of tweets where she was tweeting about three times a day and then she set it up with... So a whole week of worth of tweets, and anytime someone asked her a question, that's when she would hop back on. 
So she wouldn't engage, but at the same time, she put enough stuff out there where it was going regularly. So she was a consistent brand out there. She was still talking. She hadn't disappeared. She still stayed top of mind for everyone, but she didn't have to monitor it the same way that she did when she was actually working. Twitter is also a great way to put your personality out there. And again, this is the same with every other brand out there. LinkedIn, Facebook, Pinterest, anything that works for you. Make yourself someone interesting to follow. Like that, again, why would you follow this? Like why are you going to be someone that's worth following yourself? So another great thing about social, like Twitter is that you can aggregate everything by uh, by lists, and I do this a lot for my different um, my different accounts. Is that, and you can make them public or you make it private, so that some people, if you're looking at, like this is a list from Right Sleeve, and what Right Sleeve has done is that they have different themes. So big thinkers, conversationalists, where he puts it, tweets I maintain a regular dialogue with. So if you just want to pop on and see. These are the people who talk to me. I want to see what they're doing, and I want to stay engaged with them. That's a great way to do it. Other one is marketing. Who is interesting? You can go pop on. What are you? What are you doing? What are you engaging with? At the same time, look to see who they're talking with, because you may not be able to follow everyone, but you can sort of see where the conversation is going. Again, like I said. <laughs> Twitter, for me, I love it just because of the people that I've met through it. So does anyone remember Gordon Corman books? One person. <laughs> so my sister was the biggest fan of Gordon Corman growing up. Like, McDonald Hall, every possible book. I noticed that one of the people I was following who has become a really good friend was down in the States at a book conference. She's like, about to meet Gordon Corman. I was like, if you can get Jillian the autograph, this will be the most exciting day of her life. So she did. She got Gordon Corman to write a sign that says, hi, Jillian. And honestly, Jillian just about exploded. Like, she was everywhere this photo was. And she was just like, going, I can't believe this just happened. And it was so simple. And it was someone who saw something that I tweeted, followed me, engaged with me, and then I followed her and saw what was happening. Again, something interesting. And it's not something that's going to bring me immediate business, but when, like when Jen, who sent us this photo, when she finds out something interesting, she sent people to me where she's like, my friend needs to do a small book award. Again, it's not going to be paying off in big time, but at the same time she said, you should talk to Kate. She'll be able to direct you. And this is, so again, I can justify the time I spend on Twitter. <laughs> so. Twitter. It puts the network in social networking. I love it just because I'm never going to run into the majority of these people in real life, but it's still a way to talk to people, to engage with them. And same thing with all your brands. What do you do? What do you do that's interesting? Why should I be there? Or even just tell me what's going on. So you can go to your client and say, this has been a fabulous product. Here's an example. And here's an example right here. So this is Hatchet Books. They had a conference and they gave away a tote. One of uh, Chatelaine Reads, so Chat Reads, they put out a picture saying, these Hatchet Book totes are the best. So if this is your project right here, you've just done, you've got a fan reaction right here. And you just go in, you know these are going out soon. Follow the brand, follow that, and go through it. Because right now, and at the same time, if you're a brand too, if, this, if these are your bags, you have people going, a zip up tote, a little pocket on the side, if you're carrying books, they're perfect for the beach. Right there, that's a brand testimonial. That's, and that shows that you can go, we thought about it, they're book bags, because again, my friend goes to book conferences a lot, and she's like, they're all crap. But when she gets a good one like this, she's gonna share it. So. You have another person going, Covet, that's a really nice tote bag. They look awesome. Right there, that's a brand, again, brand testimony. That's someone saying, I like what you did, and here's proof of it. And there's four people that just engaged with it. Something interesting.
So, any questions? We're good, we're all caught up, no one's alarmed. Common skew. Who's heard of common skew? Yep, perfect. <laughs> uh, common skew is another one of my favorites. <laughs> I know, I have lots of favorites. Common skew was created by Right Sleeve, and it is an industry exclusive one. So Right Sleeve, again, it's separate, it's just the powerhouse of Catherine and Mark Graham right there. But I think it's amazing, and I think as a distributor, as a supplier, it's a great place to be on. Very easy. All you need to do is be part of the industry and sign up. So it's also a CRM management, but you don't have to do the CRM to have, have an account on there and to engage on there. But these are some of their facts they gave me. Uh, 1,000 users, and the, this facts are a couple months old, so I know the numbers have definitely gone up on that. And of 9,500 orders placed, 19 million in sales put through the platform since last year. Again, these numbers are a couple months old, so they have definitely changed. But I think Common Skew is great because, again, it's like Facebook for promotional products. It's, for, it's Facebook and LinkedIn for, sorry, for distributors and suppliers. And it's a great way because it allows you to be a little more open about what you do. I find a lot of what happens in this industry is we get very closed off and very protective, not only of our clients, but of our ideas. But that is not the way to do anything. And again, what I've kind of been preaching on Facebook and on Twitter and LinkedIn is engage. Like, put out what you think is cool. Put out what you do that is cool and work that way. So just a quick shot of what Common Skew is. So at the top right there, it's a distributor going, I've been asked for cheerleader uniforms. Who knows what they are? Like, where I can buy them? Again, and a bunch of people can pop in and say, great experience with this. There's another post saying, this is the SKU bot, which is the mascot of Common SKU. And they're like, here's all the cool things we've done with them. And at the same time, someone's launched something about what they did in Vegas, a recent video of, I went around to all the booths. Here are the cool things that I saw. So again, he's promoting himself. He, they're promoting their products, or they're just asking a question. So this is one that I did recently. And what it is is I just, I like talking on it. I find I'm part of a very small company, so the fact that I can go out and chat with other people I think is great. Like I love the national shows and I think it's, I think it also, what other people do are really cool. It's one of those things like, I didn't know that could be done or this is here. And at the same time, I don't always promote myself. It's questions of like, suppliers in the industry, what is your experience with hospitals? Or what's the best gift to give away under $5 for students? Or what's a team buy item, et cetera, et cetera. Very promotional. So Nick Harris here just goes, Any, anyone out in common skew land know of BPA free water bottles that are produced in Canada? I sell SIG bottles, which are not produced in Canada, but they're BPA free and they're made in Switzerland. So I'm going to pop on my supplier hat and I'm going to go, yes, definitely, we carry SIG, not produced in Canada, but decorated here. Contact me. Nick unfortunately came back. He goes, client's super picky and wants bottles actually made in Canada. It's been tricky to source. So that's him. That's him coming to you with a problem. He's looked everywhere. He can't find anything. Does anyone have a solution? And it's the same thing whenever you're having problems sourcing things. Like, do you call up your friends? Do you call up other distributors saying, I need custom apparel. Who do I go to? I need a crystal award. Who's the best person? Or I need, like, USB connectors. Who do you go to? Like, what's the best person to contact for this? And if not, they know someone who does. So this is what Common Skew is, but on the internet so you don't have to go outside. So I was sad that he wasn't going to buy SIG, but at the same time I went, J-Line does North America bottles, like, produced in North America. Maybe they're a good one to contact. He's like, perfect. I sent it out. Two people actually commented afterwards saying, Thanks for helping out a distributor, even though you don't get the sale. Another one, Winston Lowe here goes, Nick, I would really consider SIG. It's a great product. And I'm going, yes, this is perfect. But then what was interesting was what happened after posting this. Really simple. It took five minutes of my time to be like, well, I'm not going to get it, but I like J-Line. <laughs> Maybe they can help you out. 
two people called me afterwards. One person said, saw your posting, tell me about SIG. I'm, another person said, didn't know you carried SIG, send me some information, I'm presenting it to my client later today. That's, again, that justifies my time on the internet. <laughs> so I love that. But at the same time, that's the networking side of social networking, is that maybe this sale didn't work out for me, but it puts you in the mind of someone else. You put yourself out as author an authority for anything that you do, and people will respond to that. Like, same thing in real life, but you know, not much of our lives are going on in the outside world anymore. They're happening online, and this is the best way to connect that way. So again, common skew, I love it. I think it's interesting. I think it's worth everyone to just go on and have a look about what's happening. It's largely US-based, but at the same time, what's going on out there is still, it's still very, the changes that are happening in our industry, changes that are happening in social media. Very cool to see. So yeah, so I created an account, now what? You may not have created an account. You may have been like, well, I'm never going on Instagram. I might check out Pinterest. Like that might not work for you. LinkedIn, you might like, gotta see these groups. Common skew. So what do you do now? If content is king, then conversation is queen. And I always agree with this. Again, back to my point the entire time. Be interesting. Go out there and be worth following, be worth seeing, be worth engaging with, be worth asking questions. And at the same time, if you're not really sure, go and ask questions. Be like, how are you doing this? What's been your solution? What's worked best? So many people now are very open with the information that they have, that they're not afraid to share it. Like, again, a lot of what our industry is can get very closed off. Why not open things up a little bit more? Make yourself an authority of what's out there. So, we have some time to chat. Um, so we're a very small group, so it might be better to get all in one. So I always put, I've put some questions forward. If you're on a social media, why did you join? What's your favorite part of it? What don't you like about it? What have you experienced on it? And if you were to sum up why you're on it, go ahead. So anyone want to stand up and chat? No? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Tell me your experience. You can stand up. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm joining on Facebook because uh, I want to engage the younger people in my business. I found that that was probably the best way as recommended by my children. So we got to Facebook. And um, I found it really difficult to make sure that I posted everything and put down pictures and be engaged. Um, but I've since found new clients and new customers, and Facebook, I think, has worked. My one question for you is, do I still need my website? Or is this all this new social media in place of your website? I always say, because people like going to a website. They still do, do they? they? S yeah, they I don't think we'll, I think we might get rid of the catalog. I don't think we'll get rid of the website. Okay. <laughs> Just because a lot of people like to know that you're kind of a brick and mortar place. Even if you work from home, that they know that. I always think of social media as a way to put a face behind your brand name and as a way to connect with people. So again, with Twitter, it's just a matter of me reaching out to people and asking them questions, but at the same time in Facebook, it's you, you know, you may not want to spend the money and time to update your website, but putting a quick picture of an event that you did or connecting with people, commenting on a brand that you like, I think that's a really good way to spend your time because at the same time you can see what other people are doing. You can get ideas from what other people are doing. So it may not be, you know, I don't think we'll do away with a website, but I think it's still a beneficial tool. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? How much time do you spend? <laughs> don't ask David. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I'll spend 20 to 30 minutes a day directly on it. And most of the time that's me doing research. So if I'm working on a project with a client or like a distributor has come to me and they're like, I need some ideas for X client. I'll go through and I'll, I'll follow hashtags about, or I'll go through that brand's networks 
and just sort of see like what do they do in the past like what sort of design elements work with them like what's their brand what's their personality so I'm not going to pitch a really boring shape to or like a really boring design to someone who is crazy colorful and is young like but at the same time if they seem to be a very staid brand then I'm gonna go through my classics and be like these are the ones that work or you had great success with it on this one I think this is something that works on the other hand is I have Twitter as a feed going on in the background throughout the day and sometimes I check it regularly on slow days which are few and far between nowadays um, I will be on it and I'll be following through and following and seeing what's happening in Toronto because at the same time a lot of people post networking events that are going on and you can find them via your area even connecting with the local chamber of commerce because again a lot is done online but there's still a huge strength with going offline so it, officially 20 to 30 minutes a day unofficially probably about close to an hour just sort of researching to be honest just sort of getting an idea of what I'm working with and again what my competitors are doing or what my distributor clients are doing like who are they talking to that I think might be interesting so like are they do are they pitching themselves like are they really involved with autism Ontario and I've got a great idea for that logo like there's escapes my mind right now but there was one company and it was a beautiful logo and I came up with like a really cool idea and then I started looking to see who was their distributor or sort of like getting an idea and I found one and I was like do you pitch to them at all and they're like yeah 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 and I was like I think this could work and unfortunately they're like no no I don't I don't do awards and I was like you jerk I do awesome awards <laughs> but at the same time like that was they came back to me later and they're like they're looking for an award is there something that we can do and again that was you know maybe 20 minutes of my time whether or not it's going to pay off in the long run no but I've made myself known and I'm engaged I'm having a conversation with someone that I wouldn't have run into like what's if they didn't do awards why are they going to stop at my booth why are they going to know about me but they know about me now yeah any other questions or anyone afraid of going on the internet they're just like this is not for me I don't think there's a benefit and that's the, yeah that's the thing it's like to be honest I don't put a lot of time in LinkedIn but I recognize the value in it at the same time I've seen the payoff in common skew and I've seen the payoff on Twitter so I'll be on there and I'll be monitoring it but at the same time that's because I've spent time on it and it's the same with whatever you do whatever you learn there is an initial time investment which is very hard to do and I I totally understand that I've given up on a lot because I'm like this is not paying off for me immediately but at the same time I still like this about it so yeah we and then we know we we're on Very intimidating. Um, you know, I'm, I'm for sure for social uh, media. Um, LinkedIn is a great example. You can get on there and just get lost in all the groups. And so I think it's good advice. Tackling one at a time uh, is, is a good idea. Facebook, actually, you can have your settings where you post things on Facebook and it automatically feeds your Twitter feed. So that kind of doubles up when you post something on Facebook or mm -hmm. on, on Twitter feed. So that's kind of nice. But um, yeah, it's a real go on. And it, to be honest, I extremely I don't do a great job on clear mounts personal things, but when I do it for myself, I am very good at just putting myself out there in terms of on Twitter or on terms of like LinkedIn or in common skew just making myself known not as a brand I mean those of you that know it's a family business so I'm always part of that brand I'll never escape it <laughs> but at the same time 
like I know it's a time investment and I know it's a ball that gets dropped easily. But that's where again, once you play around with something and you get an idea of like, this is not gonna work for me. I don't, like you said, you went on Facebook and you got some new clients. So I always kind of monetize my time that way. Like if I get a thousand dollar job, like how much time did I have to spend getting that one job? Like, is it worth it in the end? I mean, if you're, same with any other job you're doing, if you're quoting it forever and it ends up just being a profit of $200, your time goes down to $2 an hour. So if you're gonna put yourself out there and two things are gonna come from one picture you do, that's five minutes of your time, but X amount of profit. But it's not gonna be immediate, it's going to be tough, and it might not be the fit for you. Yeah, and then you can think of it that way as like, are you going to spend an hour on building your Facebook and building content for it, or are you going to spend an, and reach 100 clients, or are you going to spend an hour driving out to Mississauga to reach one client, and then driving back, doing your follow-ups, right there, there's a, another time investment. So it's, again, monetize your time, monetize what you can get out of it. It won't be immediate because there's never immediate results for anything you do, but at the same time you get a feel for it. Like the common skew one where two people came and contacted me, one of them admitted, he goes, I see you're active on common skew, you have a lot of good things to say. I don't think I'm that active, I maybe pop on at once every other day, but at the same time it's enough that people recognize my name and recognize it. So. Yeah. Anything else? No? Yeah. And you know what? Even if you're not on it, just understanding it is a very big thing. To, you know, Roz in our office, she always like, tell me about Twitter, tell me about Twitter. But she doesn't spend any time on it to really engage with it. And so if I tell her something, I'm like, they're tweets, not twits. It's hashtagging. Here's how you follow this, and here's how you post this. Unless you do it and practice it, it doesn't make an impact, and you don't see, you may not see the results, but you don't see what other people are doing with it as well. And even if, you know, you go on, you lurk forever, you never put anything up, but you still understand how it works, I think that's a great strength to have. So you can talk about it with people. Just say, I've noticed this was a really big deal for this day. I think we'll get something out of it. And you know what, you can just stay up to date with what your clients are doing. If you're following them and they are putting someone up, because a lot of times, a lot of us are very small, it's hard to put that time, but a lot of the larger people, they hire people strictly to do this. So they're very good at getting a brand and notifications out. So if all you do is go in and see, well, this is what they've done lately, right there, you're coming in having done your research. So yeah. So my final point is just be awesome. Be just, you want to be someone who you would follow, who you would talk to, who you would want to be with. Be happy, be positive. There's a lot of negativity out on the internet. So I always think like what I'm going to put out into the world is what comes back to me. And that's the thing, is you got to be positive, you've got to engage, and be someone that people would want to talk to. And that's what you get. But yeah. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> So yeah, thanks. So if any